Hi, I'm Sissy Graham Lynch. Welcome to Fearless, helping you have a fearless faith in a compromising culture. Welcome back to another episode of Fearless. This is actually the final episode of 2020. But 2020 keeps proving itself all the way up to the last couple of weeks of this year, especially personally in my life. This has been a crazy week preparing to leave for Christmas, going to see my family. Plans have continued to be shifted and canceled due to COVID and um, sick kids. My kids don't have COVID, but they've just been sick this week. So it's just been a wild week, but that's been 2020 for you. And I'm supposed to be leaving town here in just a few hours. I haven't completely finished packing. And I'm once again sitting in my closet recording another episode. And if you've been following me this year, You know, since March and the pandemic, I think I've recorded almost every episode since then in my closet because I haven't traveled to work a whole lot. And my closet happens to have the best sound because of all the clothes hanging in it. So here I am with the last episode recording in my closet. But it's just so important and it's been on my heart to share a message with you that God has laid on my heart. And even though it's just crunch time right here before I'm leaving town, this has just been an unforgettable year. So I wanted to share with you what God has laid on my heart for you. So welcome to the last episode of Fearless 2020. Last week, I was scrolling through pictures on my phone from the entire year. Because for Christmas, I print off the pictures and I put them in an album. And yes, I said print off like the old school ways. And sometimes it can be hard to find an album like that. I started doing that last year as a fun little tradition. I'm going to continue. And I remember I'm such a last minute person. So it was Christmas Eve and I was putting all these pictures in this album that I had gotten for my kids. And my dad goes, Sissy, what are you doing? The kids won't care. They won't even care about those kind of things. Don't waste your time. And... Sure enough, when my kids opened up the photo album, it was their favorite gift. They sat there and they looked at every picture. They pull it out every other couple weeks throughout the year. And we talk about it. Just the other day, my son was in trouble and I sent him to his room. And when I walked in, he was um, on the floor looking at this photo album from last Christmas that had all the pictures from the year prior to it. And then I sat down, my daughter joined in, and we talked about all the fun memories. So anyways, that's a side note of a little fun Christmas tradition I do for my kids. But I was looking through all these pictures from the entire year, and all these emotions and memories came back as each picture just triggered unique emotions that we faced in this unprecedented year. With the uh, global pandemic, it took me back to that very first homeschool week where that first day we survived. And after that, it was kind of like smooth sailing um, to being in Easter in New York City with my dad and Michael W. Smith. The thought of like hearing Michael W. Smith sing inside Central Park with my dad preaching was a memory that just triggers a lot of emotions for me spending our summer in Alaska with Samaritan's Purse and Operation Healer Patriots and just having a time with my family that's unique and special. You know, I look back at some of the screenshots I've taken throughout the year with, you know, the racial divide and just the new school year that started with lots of changes for me speaking at the RNC to a hostile election year. You know, it's just been very unique. And all these pictures and screenshots on my phone were just taking lots, um, taking me back to lots of memories of this year. And I've shared with you, um, for me in 2020, there's been really sweet moments, I'm sure for everybody. And there's been really difficult and hard moments, especially some families have experienced harder ones than most. And the other day I was driving and I was thinking back of this year and personally, It's been a good year for my family. It's been quite different. There's been its challenges, but overall I have really enjoyed it. And 
I almost felt guilty saying that. But for me, I've been so busy for the last few years that I almost needed God to like halt my schedule, to cancel it, for me just to have stillness before Him, which I've shared in other episodes throughout this year about that. But it's been a sweet time for my family and a time that was unexpected. So this unexpected year gave me unexpected time with my family, and that's been the greatest thing I have cherished throughout this year. But one of the sweetest memories I had was right when COVID started, my little girl was doing a Bible study with Kay Arthur, or one of Kay Arthur's Bible study books um, about creation. And I had sent the picture to Miss Kay. I don't know Miss Kay very well uh, prior to this. We'd only met a couple of times, but I sent it to her just telling her, thank you for the devotions that we're now doing it during COVID. And she sent back and we started talking and to make a long story short, her and I ended up one-on-one doing the Bible, a Bible study together over the phone during just the beginning of the pandemic. And we studied the book of Daniel. And I have shared many times since then the verse that has stuck out to me that she challenged me with. And that's Daniel chapter 11. And it says, by smooth words, and we're talking about the Antichrist, he will turn to godlessness those who act wickedly toward the covenant. But, and I love that, it says, but the people who know their God will display strength and take action. And that's been my theme verse for this year. And at this point, you might be tired of hearing me, but I want to challenge you with that, that those who know their God will be able to strength and take action. And this has been a year to me with everything that's happened, that this has been a year of trying to figure out what truth is and seeking truth. And I think with that, for me, it was starting to know God better with that verse so that in those days, those challenging days and the difficult days to come, maybe in the end times, I don't know, but that I will be able to stand in strength and take action when things get hard, when things get difficult, when my faith is challenged. So to seek God, to seek to know Him. And I think there's a difference um, to knowing about God than knowing God. And that's been one of my prayers is, God, help me to know you, just not know about you, but to know your characteristics and your heart. But in this year with so many issues that we have faced, it's been like, what is truth? It's been hard to find truth this year. Um, You know, with the news, when we look at COVID, you know, what they told us in the beginning is quite different now, and truth was always changing day to day. When we look at the racial divide, it was quite hard to find truth about facts, about different events, um, and facts about different organizations out there that people were going off. You look at critical race theory, what is the truth behind it? You know, behind the riots, what's the truth? With the election right now, we're looking, what is the truth about the election? So my prayer um, in the last couple of months has been, God, let truth prevail. Let your truth be known. Because scripture says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But when people don't have truth, people will act in emotion And we have seen lots of emotion in 2020. I think one of the greatest things of 2020, it's revealed a lot about people and the truth about people, the truth about a lot of churches, a lot of pastors, maybe family and friends, because people have been acting on emotion and a lot of of things have been shown out of people. But when we don't act in truth, people will act in emotions and not facts. But when we have truth, when we have the facts, then you can have the confidence to move forward. And in our spiritual life and how we are to navigate through this world and the chaotic events that we have faced this year, and as we face this world, we're to be standing on God's truth and the facts of God's word. It's our anchor. It's the solid rock we are to stand on in the storm. And that those who know their God, like Scripture says, 
will be able to stand in strength. When you know His Word, it will revive you. It will give you the ability to stand in confidence to where we don't crumble, but we can stand and we can do that and we can stand strongly. Because I look at somebody like my husband, and for those who are maybe new to listening or following, my husband, Corey, played in the NFL He had a very successful college career, and he went on to play in the NFL for six years until an injury ended his career. But I look at him, and I had the complete confidence that when he stepped out in that field, he had the confidence when he stepped out there on that field. And if you had looked at Corey, many times people didn't think he was um, a football player. He didn't have the build, or he wasn't the tallest one, maybe even the fastest one, but he had this ability because he had been a student of the game since he was seven years old. He had trained, he had worked, he had perfected his skill. He studied the playbook. He studied the opposing team. And when, you're, when you study it, when you perfect your skill and you know it, then you can walk onto that field with confidence. And that the same goes with our faith. We are to work on it. We're to perfect it. We are to know the playbook. We are to know God's word. We are to know him. We're even to know the opponent, Satan, so that we can be able to, you know, have discernment when it's God's will or if it's Satan's voice talking to us, that if we know God's word, we can stand in that confidence and in that strength that no matter what we face in this world, that we can stand strong on the solid rock and the solid foundation of God's word. And as we celebrate Christmas this week, I want to take a look at a woman in the Bible who displays this confidence. She displays the confidence and truth and knowledge of God and who He is at a time when her life was shaken and turned upside down. So let's look at Mary, the mother of Jesus, in Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Well, how might this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. And she said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be as you have said. And then the angel left her. And I want to pause there for a second because I want to remind you that says, Do not be afraid. I've circled that in my Bible over and over, and the Lord is with you because nothing is impossible with God. And what I love is, have you ever thought about Mary and this moment when the angel came to her, that this was a young girl, we don't know the exact age of Mary, but according to customs and stuff, she was probably very young, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, whatever it might be. Here's a young girl that her life was literally turned upside down, that this could have been a storm in her life where she could have been afraid, but there was such a peace in her statement where she said, I am the Lord's servant, that the angel told her that there was nothing impossible with God and that she trusted God and she trusted what was going to happen with that statement of saying, I'm the Lord's servant. May it be as you have said. Because have you ever wondered how Mary must have thought after the angel came to her? Because who was going to believe her and what would her family do? You know, would she be kicked out of the family? She could have been put to death. 
what would Joseph do? She would be mocked and ridiculed probably for the next 30 years, maybe until Jesus' first miracle at the wedding feast, that they would mock her and make fun of her. And I think of this year that many of you, your lives have been turned upside down, that you might be afraid of everything that we have faced. Maybe you're afraid of what's to come in, um, in your future. You, there's not a lot of trust. You're worried. You're scared. But there was peace in her statement. There was trust in her statement. And Scripture says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. And Mary wasn't afraid. And although she might have had a big like lump in her throat, maybe she was um, nervous because from her viewpoint, this could have looked disastrous, but she trusted God and it's that simple. She surrendered it. My grandfather has taught me that we can fully surrender God in three areas. And I won't go too deeply into that for today's episode, but we can surrender to God in our mind, with our body, and with our will. And I want to ask you, have you ever surrendered yourself unconditionally to Christ as Mary did? Have you said, Lord, I am your servant. Your will be done with my life. Because God only wants our surrendered hearts and our obedience to follow Him. 1 Samuel 12, 24 says, Obey the Lord and serve Him faithfully with all of your heart and remember the great things He has done for you. And when we look at Scripture and when we look at the birth of a child was announced, we look at Genesis 18 and when Sarah laughed and Luke 1 and Zechariah doubted, but Mary's response was quite different from the others. She believed. Even when we don't seem it humanly possible, We must remember with God, it's all possible because verse 37 says, for nothing is impossible with God. With man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible, according to Matthew 19, 26. I want to ask you right now, what seems impossible in your life to overcome? Is it the finances? Um, Maybe the loss that you have experienced this year? Maybe your marriage is failing. Maybe you have a prodigal child, your finances, your health, your job. What seems impossible? And I want to remind you that nothing's impossible with God. Don't give up, even in the desperation of this year of 2020. My grandmother always said, you're to pray, pray, and peg away, that you do not give the enemy the satisfaction of the victory. You keep going, you stand strong, and you keep praying. Because Mary, she didn't know what was to happen. She couldn't see the ending. She only knew God had chosen her. And she willingly and joyfully submitted and freely submitted to the calling on his life. It was a full surrender. But as we keep going in Luke chapter 1 and verse 39... um, I'll skip over a little bit for the sake of time, but she went to go visit her cousin, Elizabeth, and Elizabeth greeted her. And in verse 46, it was Mary's song of praise. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For He has been mindful of the humble state of His servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. And she continues on to sing these praises to God. And when you look at Scripture and when you look at these verses, they're all parallel to Hannah's prayer when Hannah was praying for a child. And it shows us, the Scripture reveals to us that at a young age, Mary's heart was saturated with God's Word. And I believe wholeheartedly that that's why she was able to stand strong, that she was able to stand in confidence and trusted God and was able to surrender because she had God's word as her anchor. She knew God's word so that she could trust him with her life. And I want to encourage you with that. And that's been my encouragement throughout the whole year is that we have to know God. Mary knew God. So in the time when her life could have seemed very disastrous, 
when she could have crumbled, when she could have been afraid, she wasn't any of those things. But that she was able to stand strong, that she was able to stand in strength because she knew who her God was, that she could call on Him and pull out these scriptures. I always use the illustration, if you had a bucket of water and you go over a big bump, what's going to come out of that bucket? Water, of course. And when your life, when you go over the speed bumps of life, what's going to come out of your mouth? It's whatever is hidden in your heart is what's going to come out of your mouth. And I want to ask, is it God's Word that's hidden out of your heart so that you can call on Him and recite His Word and Scriptures to not doubt Him, but to be a servant, to trust Him with the impossible because you know His Word is hidden? As we must be rooted and anchored in, with the never-changing truth of God's Word. God's words are anchor when that storms come. His word does not change. Jesus does not change. Doesn't change with the times. This year, we've seen a lot of changes. The truth just seems to um, be relative to culture. God's truth doesn't change. When culture is trying to tell you one thing, um, the church is trying to tell you another, I want you to look back and you look at God's word and what does God's word have to tell you about these issues that we are facing? Psalm 119.11 says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Also in Psalm 119, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We even see in scripture in um, Matthew chapter four, when Jesus triumphed over Satan three times. And what did he triumph Satan with? Not with his power, not with his might, but he conquered Satan with scripture. He defeated Satan in the desert and he defeated him at the temple and he defeated him at the high place. It's our anchor. It's what we can fight Satan off with. And a little side note, when they're in the desert, Satan threw scripture back at Jesus. That Satan, our enemy, he knows God's word too. So we have to know it. We have to hidden it so we can stand strong when the enemies of this world come against us. So this Christmas, I want you to open up Luke chapter one, look at Mary and study her. Look how she praises God with all of her heart, even in a time that was uncertain for her, uncertain for the future of what that would look like. But she had a peace in her heart. And I wanna close with Isaiah 26, three. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind on Him and trust Him. Thank you for joining me along this crazy ride of 2020 here at Fearless. Many of you have encouraged me along the way, and many times that encouragement was greatly needed. So I want to say thank you. I also want to remind you of this Christmas and this holiday season, our prayer line at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is open. You know, if you're lonely, if you're fearful, if you're sad, you need someone to talk to, listen and pray, they are here. And the number is 1-888-388-2683. I know that's a lot of eights in there. I will put that in my show notes and maybe share that with a friend who you think might need that. But once again, thank you for joining me on the final episode of 2020. Merry Christmas, and I will be back after the new year. I wasn't given the spirit of fear. I was